Hi, everybody. How are you doing, ladies? And those of you who are following along, we are continuing our I Am series, and we were at the woman at the well. Um, are you dried up, thirsty, and parched? He's the living water, and how nothing will satisfy us but the Lord, but the living water. Everything else leaves you thirsty. It's like drinking salt water. Father, we just pray for this message, Lord. Your word would just pierce our hearts. You would encourage us, Lord. I pray for every woman here listening. You would so minister to her, Lord. If she's thirsty, she would just find her satisfaction in you. You are so good, Lord. Your water never runs out. Your refreshment never runs out. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, um, I wanted to read uh, something that I just, I'm a book reader, you know that. But it's um, part two. If you've if you've never read Streams in the Desert, that's amazing. Get that book. But part two, I'm not a part two person because usually they're not as good as part one. But this one is Springs in the Valley. Springs in the Valley, Mrs. Charles Co Coman, C-O-W-M-A-N. Wow, she's got some pretty profound things in here. And she talks about when the brook dries up, when our brook dries up. And it's kind of the woman at the well. He says, um, God knows that there are heavenly whispers that men cannot hear till the drought of trouble and perhaps weariness has silenced the babbling brook of joy. Maybe you uh, had joy and now it's um, kind of worn out. You're worn out. You have no joy. And he is not satisfied until we have learned to depend not upon his gifts, but upon him Self. Remember that saying that Corey Ten Boom says, you'll never know Jesus is all you need till he is all you have. That's why we go through trials. That's why we go through hard times. That's why he takes everything away from us so that we have just the Lord, which is just the Lord, everything, everything you need. When you have Jesus, you need, there's no need, <laughs> no need in his presence. If thus, O soul, the brook your heart has cherished does fail you now. Is there something failing you now? Something you cherished? No more your thirst assuaged. In other words, you're just not quenching your thirst anymore. If it's once glad, refreshing. Streams have perished. Let him your heart engage. He will not fail, nor mock, nor disappoint you. His comforts change not with the years. Wow. You know, can you look back on a time when you had people that you loved around you and now they're gone or things a situation that you loved and it's changed but he does not change with the years with oil of joy he surely will anoint you and wipe away your tears and then another part it says oh christ in you my soul has found and found in thee alone the peace the joy i sought so long the bliss till now unknown i sighed for rest and happiness i yearned for them not thee but while I passed my Savior by, his love laid hold of me. I tried the broken cisterns, Lord, but oh, the waters failed. Even as I stooped to drink, they fled and mocked me as I wailed. Now none but Christ can satisfy, none other name for me. There's love and life and lasting joy, Lord Jesus found in me. And there is just the perfect, if you've not read the Chronicles of Narnia, um, get them, read them. They're not just for kids, they're for adults. There's such rich um, allegories in there. And just, if you want to learn the Bible, you could read the Chronicles of Narnia. You'll get some amazing parallels. But basically, this girl Jill is running from her classmates or teasing her. She's just running out in the woods and she's so thirsty. And when you run, you get thirsty. And she's frantically looking for a stream and then she finally finds one and, and as she's going to drink, she spots a lion <laughs> and she's terrified. And she's like, let me just sneak away and maybe he won't see me. But then he spots her and he starts talking to her <laughs> and he says, hey, if you're thirsty, go ahead and drink. She's like, uh, but you're a lion. He's like, so? And she's like, <laughs> the conversation is rich. Um, are you a good lion? And I love how he just says, I eat. I've eaten girls, boys, countries. And she's like, oh my goodness, okay, I'm, I'm out of here. But then basically when she says, I'm gonna look for another stream, 
he tells her, there is no other stream and you will die of thirst looking. That's profound. So basically he's saying, you're gonna have to trust me. You're gonna have to come and drink and trust me. And of course, when she finally, cause she's so thirsty, she's like going crazy with thirst. When she does finally drink a little nervously, she realizes it's the best water I've ever tasted. And I don't think I'll ever get thirsty again. I love that. But then she realizes he's Aslan the lion, her best friend. Just a great little story. There is no other stream. And just like how we need to learn that. We look frantically in the world for this, you know, passion, possession, position. Um, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. They're all passing away. How we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I love how it's a picture of the, of the living water, picture of the Holy Spirit. Um, there's two castles over in Scotland, still standing today. You know, one survived the war and one is in shambles. And what was the secret? What was the difference? One was built brilliantly over a well, over a well. So it always had water coming up into the castle. You know, such a picture of our lives. When we have Jesus Christ within us, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. How we need that. We don't need to go back and forth to the well, back and forth to the well. We just turn, you know, turn on the spigot. But anyway, if the Holy Spirit was taken out of the church, what would change? If the Holy Spirit was taken out of the church, what would change? And if the Holy Spirit was taken out of your life, what would change? Because, you know, we all know how to go press the button and go by rote. Okay, just praise the Lord. Sometimes we're like little robots, but I always think of a chicken. When you cut a chicken's head off, and I've never done that. I mean, your grandmothers tell you these stories. Cut off the chicken's head. Guess what? It runs around more than ever. It's like you might think it's more alive than ever. Wow. Um, but the head is cut off, and soon it's gonna. It's a dead chicken running around. Soon it's gonna figure out my head is gone. And you know we do that sometimes. We just go by rote. But if the Holy Spirit were taken out of our lives, what what would change? What would change? Hopefully we are operating by the power of the Holy Spirit because if we're not, it's all in the flesh. Wood, hay, stubble, all gonna go up in smoke, all gonna burn, and it's not gonna affect anybody. Again, you ever come across those people? Um, Calvary Magazine, Kay Smith passed a couple of months ago and her life affected so many people because of her brilliance. Was she a great speaker? No, she was, she was dependent on the Holy Spirit. I remember her just shaking in her boots, her just saying, I just can't speak, I'm not a teacher, but I can talk about Jesus. I love that about her, but you know, it's not about me. I'm gonna talk about Jesus. That's what the Lord showed her. You're not a speaker, it's okay. You can talk about me and what you learned in your devotions. I love that. So you know what, if you have a devotional life, you're gonna be able to talk to people. You're gonna be able to quench people's thirst. D.L. Moody said in his book, Secret Power, how many of our people or children come to us with their bucket and they dip in our empty well. They come up in our well and it's not full. God help us. How we need to keep our wells full so that when people come, we can give them drink from the living water. You know, we don't have anything, but we can just pass on our water to them. We can be filled. We can be dipping from the well, the living water. Um, Sammy Morris, the hero of the faith. If you can, if you can Google it, look online, Amazon, um, Sammy Morris, hero of the faith. His story is absolutely amazing. Um, sadly, back in those African tribes, they used their children as pawns. Like if you, if one was, someone was mad at you, they would take your kid and punish your kid. Back and forth they would go. Well, this poor kid got, got such a beating that he just, he was probably gonna die, just gonna, on the brink of death. And he heard this voice, Sammy, get up and run. Well, that alone was a miracle because he was so badly beaten that he couldn't even walk. Well, he got up and ran. And as he's in the jungle and you don't survive the jungle, there's boars, there's snakes, anacondas, there's wild boars, nobody survi survives the jungle. A little kid doesn't survive a jungle. And then those ants that come and oh, eat your body. Anyway, he survived that. And then he came across a clearing of a of coffee plantation 
and wouldn't you know owned by missionaries and this little lady took her him into her, her home and taught him about the bible taught him about the bible um and he just couldn't get enough he couldn't get enough and she just said sammy i just don't know i can't teach you anymore you need so much more i think you need to go to america and he was like yes i want to go learn about god i am just so thirsty i'm so hungry and this little kid had no money so he went on the dock and he just said um if to, to any of the boats that came by he says i will work i will work hard just i want to get to america and um wow <laughs> little did he know he was taken by a pirate ship and you know what pirates do well they abused this poor little kid but i'll tell you what did he was he daunted no he was so filled with the spirit he would shine their shoes he would sing he was so kind to them and there was one particular man on the ship that they think he was demon possessed because he would say every time he'd see him i'm gonna kill you by the time this uh trip is over i'm gonna kill you and this kid again filled with the spirit one day he was uh, singing a song jesus loves me this i know some some song i don't know that they had back in the day and one of the pirates i think it was the captain stopped dead in his tracks and he said my mother used to sing that song to me and something happened there was like a holy hush that came over the, the boat um the captain was so changed i mean i think they threw the rum out i mean there was such a revival on the ship and he just said nobody's going to be drinking anymore nobody's going to be cursing anymore there was such a move of the holy spirit and that man that was so angry at sammy he got saved it's just an amazing story um but then he goes to america and learns about the holy spirit and, and it, the story continues wherever this kid went Oh my goodness, wherever he went to a desert, it was like Hawaii afterwards. He brought the Holy Spirit with him. This kid, Lloyd and I cried when we read the end of the book. It was so moving. Sammy Morris, Hero of the Faith. Um, you have to read it. Anyway, what do we bring with us when we are so filled with the Holy Spirit, that living water? And I'll tell you what, water's a force. We all know about a tsunami, don't we? okay tsunamis can damage the whole landscape um water is powerful some of us know that have has flooding the whole house flooded ruined your whole house water is a powerful force it can change the landscape it can turn a, a desert into hawaii and i love the passage that talks about um i'm just a picture of niagara falls i just love that you know how we did we're running out of jesus we're running out of stuff the Lord says, ah, look at Niagara Falls. The water keeps coming. The water keeps flowing. You hear the kids in the background? <laughs> um, anyway, water of the Holy Spirit. It'll never run out. You know, you're in a situation where I don't love these people. God, I hate where I'm at. Or some of my family members. Let me tell you something. You just put your little cup under Niagara Falls. You will have enough water and then some to, to overflow stay under niagara falls stay under the spout where the glory comes out i probably got that wrong anyway um but in ezekiel just love the whole picture of the holy spirit he says are you ankle deep are you knee deep are you thigh deep you can pretty much walk around the ocean water are you waist deep it's a little harder to walk then are you shoulder deep or are you carried away what what would describe your your feeling of the holy spirit what would describe it? Are you like still in control? Are you still, um, I don't know, a court low? <laughs> or are you so filled with the Holy Spirit that Jesus can take you wherever he wants? There's no resistance. You know that the more mature you get in the Lord, it seems like you say, yes, Lord, so much quicker. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here I am. Send me wherever, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I love um, also baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a it's a pickling term. There's an old pickle recipe somebody found, and it just said, "Baptize the cucumber in vinegar, and you will have a pickle." <laughs> How funny is that? So, are you pickled? You know what vinegar does to you? It just um, turns you into a delicious pickle, right? So, are you pickled? Have you been drenched in Jesus? Um, how, we, again, we need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. I love how in Genesis 1, it just says, um, the earth was without form and void. The earth was without form and void. 
You know, that's a life. Look at people around you without the Holy Spirit. There's no life. They're, they're like zombies. They're like dead men walking. They're zombies. But how we need to have the Holy Spirit just make give us life, give us um, beauty, okay? And again, he does not make you weird. The Holy Spirit does not make you weird. Don't blame some of this kooky stuff you see on TV, but the Holy Spirit, that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes you like Jesus. The Holy Spirit makes you disappear. The Holy Spirit makes you a servant. In fact, when you're around, uh, people are blessed. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Okay. Wow. Kids usually don't scream, but uh, when I'm trying to do a, a video, <laughs> that's okay. Lord help those kids. Um, anyway, I want to read you before we close here. I love this poem. I don't know who wrote it, but it's in the, it's, um, and you can Google it anywhere. But once it was a blessing, now it is the Lord. Sorry. Once it was the feeling, now it is his word. Once his gifts I wanted, now the giver own. Once for self, I, once I sought for healing, now himself alone. Once was perfect trying, now it's perfect trust. Once a half salvation, now the uttermost. Once was constant drifting, now my anchor is cast. Once was busy planning, now it's trustful prayer. Once was anxious caring, now he has the care. Once was what I wanted, now what Jesus says. Once was constant asking, now it's ceaseless praise. Once it was my working, now the work does he. Once I tried to use him, now he uses me. Once the power I wanted, now the mighty one. Once for self I labored, now for him alone. Oh, I love that. What a blessing. Father, I pray that you would just fill us with your Holy Spirit. Would you just love... Put water on those dry places, Lord. Fill us with that Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for the woman at the well, how you found this poor, dried up, used woman just at the right time. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. We will continue her story next week. God bless you and hopefully see you at Women's Bible Study. God bless you.